So at, as I had promised before that I'd come back with the proof of the binomial theorem with the revision exercise of in mathematical induction. I'm back. And uh, yeah, so the question that I'll be covering today is prove the binomial theorem when it is already proved for n equal to 2, 3. Why I already said that it's already proved for n equal to 2, 3 is the binomial theorem for n equal to 2, 3 boils down to the general formula that we have for a plus b whole square equal to a square plus 2 ab plus b square and a plus b whole cube equal to a cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 b square plus b cube. So those are not difficult to, I mean, those are literally formulae and uh, I'm sure that you know the proof of those formulae. So I'm not considering the binomial theorem for n equal to 2, 3. The main thing that I'll be covering is for values of n greater than 3. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, the big values. So what, when we are given to prove the binomial theorem, uh, in case you are giving given it in the examination, what I'd suggest is go by the original mathematical induction steps that we had done. So there are four steps. The first step is you uh, express the question in the uh, statement form, like the PN form. So in this case, the PN will essentially be the statement of the binomial uh, theorem. So the expansion, the A plus B, whole to the power a plus x whole to the power n equal to the entire expansion that you have that a plus x whole square equal to that expansion this will be your statement for the mathematical induction sum so that will be your first step the second step is you prove it for n equal to 2 and 3 or you can actually prove it for 3 because uh, n plus, those are basically formulas so that depends upon what uh, sum has been given to you uh, but that is not the most difficult part. The most difficult part starts from step three, where we consider the bigger values of n. So what essentially we do is step three, we assume the binomial theorem Pn that we have stated before to be true for sum n equal to n. That is the general form of mathematical induction sum that we proceed with. So we assume this expansion to be true for some value of n equal to m and that is what i've written so i've replaced the value of n equal to m already so i have a plus x whole to the power n equal to a to the power n plus mc1 a to the power m minus 1 x to the power 1 you can ignore it if you want plus dot dot dot, dot, dot plus the r plus 1 -th term is mcr a to the power m minus 1 x to the power r plus up till the n plus 1 -th or the last term which is x to the power m so this is the assumption that I made. We assume that this expression is true for some value of n equal to m. Note that m is a particular value of n. n is the general value and m is a particular value that n assumes in this case. So we have this first condition that is the uh, step three assumption. That's the first part of the second condition of by, uh, mathematical induction. Next, we move on to the second part of the second condition of mathematical induction, which is the step four. So under the condition, under the assumption that we made in step three for n equal to m, we next analyze the situation. What would happen if n takes the value m plus one? So if n takes the value after m, what happens then? So what you can do is you can either multiply both sides of one equation one with a plus x or you can start from the LHS itself. So LHS will uh, LHS for step four will be n replaced with m plus one. So we have a plus x whole to the power m plus one. Now this a plus x whole to the power m plus one can be divided into two parts. So we can have a plus x whole to the power m into a plus x. So if you know the law of indices, if you multiply um, two terms, two same terms which have different indices, the indices essentially get added up. So a plus x whole to the power m into a plus x will be a plus x whole to the power m plus one. So that's the first thing that we do. We split it up into a plus x whole to the power m into a plus x. Now why we did it in this form is this expression we already know from the assumption that we made in step three. So this is the assumption that we made and we assume that this assumption is true. We assume that this expression is true. What do I mean by this assumption is true? We assume that this expression is true. So what we can do is we can essentially replace this value over here. So we can replace a plus x whole to the power m with this entire expression and a plus x remains the same multiplied with this big expression that we have. Next step is the trickiest ex uh, step in the entire sum. 
what happens is we uh, kind you can you can jump steps if you want or you can uh, put some two or three steps uh, in between these two steps but i'd suggest it's not that difficult of a step you just need to make sure that you understand what you're doing the first thing that we do is we take this term and we take this term and we multiply these two terms so we multiply a to the power m and a if we multiply a to the power m with a we get a to the power m plus 1 the next step that we do is we multiply a to the power m with x. If we multiply a to the power m with x, what I have is we have a to the power m x. What I do is I write that term over here and I wait. Next, what I do is I multiply this second term over here with the first term over here. So the first term correspond, corresponding to both the terms in a plus x, this is done. So we are over with this term. The next term that we have at our hand in the first bracket is mc1 a to the power m minus 1 x to the power 1. And we multiply this term with the first term in this smaller bracket, which is a. So we multiply mc1 a to the power m minus 1 into x into a. So we have mc1 a to the power m into x. And if we take common a to the power m uh, ax, we are left with mc1. That entire part, I have uh, skipped a few steps. So what I'm left with is if I take a to the power mx common from the second part, I am left with mc1. And from the part of a to the power m multiplied by x, I am left with a to the power m into x because I have taken this part common, so I'm left with one. So this part gets into a bracket. You can continue this way and you will find out that the second or the third term rather that you have is mc2 plus mc1 into a to the power m minus 1 except. If you have any for problem with understanding this, then you can again check out the way that we did it, the, the way that we found the second term and it is exact same way to find the third uh, term of this expression. So the next step that we do is instead of writing m1 over here, I can write it as mc0. I have discussed it before that 1 is equal to mc0 or mc0 or any number here, c0. So what I do is instead of writing mc1 plus 1, I write mc1 plus mc0. And here we have mc2 plus mc1. Similarly, for the r plus 1x term, we have mcr plus mcr minus 1. Next, what I do is, if you remember a formula that we had discussed before, we have mcr plus mcr minus 1 equal to m plus 1 cr. So, if the, power, if the number on the head of the letter c is the same, and we have numbers preceding one after the other, so we have a number and then the number preceding that, then the number on the head gets added, and we take the higher number from these two. So, what happens is, you see we have mc1 and mc0. So in both cases we have m. So when we add these two, the number on the head gets added by 1 and we take the higher number. So we take the higher number of 1 and 0. So we get mc1, uh, uh, m plus 1, c1. Similarly, mc2 plus mc1 gives me m plus 1, c2. So I have simplified these bracketed portions and I have simplified it into a single term and I have uh, shortened the expression. Now, if you see a to the power m plus one, m plus one putting in a bar bracket, we have a to the power m plus one plus m plus one c one, a to the power m plus one minus one, because the exponential over here was a to the power m. I can obviously write it as a to the power m plus one minus one because one one gets canceled. So there is no hard and fast rule that I have to copy it. I can adjust it in the way that I want. So I write it as m plus one c one, a to the power m plus one minus one, x to the power one. Again, the third term will be m plus one bar bracket c two, a to the power m plus one minus two, because the exponential for this was m minus one. So I can write it as m plus one minus two. The meaning remains the same. So I write the third term as m plus one c two, a to the power m plus one minus two, x squared. And I do the same for the rest of the expression using dot dots in between. So what I'm essentially left with is the right hand side of the value of the statement for m equal n equal to n plus 1. 
So you see, the binomial theorem is essentially proved for the value of n equal to m plus 1 when we make the assumption that the statement is true for n equal to m. So that is essentially the uh, procedure where um, the procedure in which we uh, prove statements by the method of mathematical induction. So we know that the binomial theorem is true for any value of n. 